I want to start this lecture with a prayer from Francis Xavier. Francis Xavier was one of the founders of the Society of Jesus and a famous missionary to Asia. This is the prayer of Xavier. Eternal God, creator of all things, remember that you alone have created the souls of unbelievers, which you have made according to your image and likeness. Behold, O Lord, how to your dishonor many of them are falling into hell. Remember, O Lord, your Son, Jesus Christ, who so generously shed his blood and suffered for them. Do not permit that your Son, our Lord, remain unknown by unbelievers, but with the help of your saints and the church, the bride of your Son, remember your mercy, forget their idolatry and infidelity, and make them know him whom you have sent, Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is our salvation, our life, and our resurrection whom we have been saved and redeemed, and to whom is due glory forever. Amen. In this lecture, I want to take some time to consider the movie you watched by Martin Scorsese called Silence. This movie is, is based on a famous novel by Shisako Indu, and it is a complex novel. Um, you've watched the movie already, and I think you've realized that it is a very multi-layered and complex movie. Um, I, I want to read some lines from this book um, by Mak Makato Fujimura, who's a famous artist. And he wrote a book called uh, Silence and Beauty, which are his reflections on Endo's book, Silence. Here's what Fujimura wrote. In many quarters, communication of the good news is a consumer-driven, mall-like experience that plays to people's escapist fantasies. Going to church or attending a Christian concert often is a reprieve from the ills that face us. Works like silence seem harsh and stark, and they seem to hit home too deeply in an entertainment-filled world. Rarely do we encounter art that gives attention to the complexity paradoxes and mysteries of life without falling into the abyss of despair. Silence is an antidote to the morphine-like numbness of our culture. I want to acknowledge um, the complexity of this movie that you have watched and reflected on. Um, it raises some profound moral questions and really, that's the purpose of this class as we reflect on historical and moral theology. Our goal in reflecting on theology is to, to gain a broader and deeper understanding of the theological tradition and stories that shape us. As I stated um, in one of the earlier lectures, we want to understand the lenses that we wear theologically and philosophically. But often, moral issues come up that have no easy or simple resolution. So, in this movie and in Endo's book, you have this challenge. Just putting your foot on the thing, on the fumi'a, the image of Christ on the cross, or other um, images of the Christian faith that were so important, to Catholic Christians in Japan. Just putting your foot on the thing will not betray your faith. Father Ferreira said, God is silent, but you do not have to be. If Christ were here, he would have apostatized for their sake. Show God you love him. You are about to fulfill the most painful act of love that has ever been performed, apostatizing. Such a complex and deep question. What do you do in this situation if you're putting your foot on this thing could save the suffering of others? What do you do? Fujimura writes, the Fumi-a, which I have an image of here on your screen, the Fumi-a then constitutes a portal through which Endo saw the wretchedness of the human condition, 
Through silence, his personal reality became a universal phenomena. The muddy swamp of Japan gave birth to Fumia culture, a culture that forces individuals to suppress their most treasured identity. Fumia culture as a unique, attenuated crucible of trauma slowly seeped deep beneath the surface of society over 250 years. Remaining silent, being stoic, and being good at hiding one's true feelings and thoughts have become the accepted way to deal with trauma and fear. We have this fascinating um, character, Kichijuro, and as he's before the father, he says, I have no place to go. Where does a weak man go in a world like this? And I would guess that for both Scorsese and Endo, they saw in this character who's inconsistent and even comical at times, valiant at times, a coward at others. I think perhaps Endo and Scorsese see themselves in this character. What do we do when we ourselves feel like we are this man with no place to go? What do we do when we feel like we have betrayed our faith? What do we do when our minds are filled with confusion and uncertainty? I find great power in a quote by Philip Yancey, and that is, Endo mentions the transformation of the disciples once they realized that Christ still loved them after they had betrayed him. To be proven wrong was nothing new. To be proven treacherously wrong and still loved, that was new and radical. At the cross, hiddenness, ambiguity, and strange beauty converge. Reflecting on this quote, the person that comes to my mind is the Apostle Peter. Brave, fearless Peter, who, in the face of questioning as Jesus was being questioned by the religious leader, denied that he knew his Savior three times. Yet, in John 21, the Savior comes to him and with a conversation over a charcoal fire, ask a simple question, Peter, do you love me? You know, Lord, that I do. Feed my sheep. Tend my lambs. Feed my sheep. Three times the denial. Three times the restoration. I hope in the complexity of this movie and the complexity of Endo's book and novel that we're forced to wrestle with some challenging moral questions that we are facing now perhaps or perhaps we'll face them in the future the artist Makado Fujimoro he he makes the statement that silence is a profoundly missional novel despite the fact that it describes the failures of faith its mission is not about triumphantly regarding the island of Japan as an imperialistic exploit rather it is the mission of entering deeply into the psyche of Japanese hearts struggling with trauma. By doing so, Endo captures the possibility that the good news of the Bible can heal the trauma and provide a way for Japanese to be truly liberated. Silence depicts a new outlook, much like our 21st century understanding of global Christianity. Rather than a triumphal Western faith, silence depicts God in more ambiguous and empathetic terms.